what's going on everybody it's a snowy day in the washington dc area you see people moving about in this uh miniature blizzard that we had here kids snowball fighting enjoying the winter wonderland as they say it's your man low i'm coming back to you again want to uh touch back base on this this uh, stealthing issue and we visited last time and I, we had talked about the CNN article and now in this particular video I want to go to the uh, Cura message boards to find out what the general opinion of this is as a parallel to uh, lying about being on contraception or lying about having birth control to see if the parallel between uh, consent uh, with having sex protected versus, versus having sex when knowing or thinking that your partner is on birth control and whether that constitutes sexual deception. So that is basically what is going to be played and uh, I'll take you there now. Peace. I queried Google to find out if anyone was talking about whether if the, there was a parallel between a woman lying about taking birth control and a man stealthing or taking condom off during sexual intercourse without the female's consent. I got some interesting dialogue in this particular cure, especially from Lexa Michalides. I think that's how you pronounce it. it sounds Greek. Spelled like Michael with I-D-E-S, so I think it's pronounced Michaelides. Lexa Michaelides, an intersexual feminist, management and engineering management engineering student student at U Waterloo. So a lot of the dialogue I'll be focusing on comes from her. Michaelides' argument is that it's a person's right to have bodily autonomy. And if someone consents to sex only with the understanding that there will be contraception and or barrier protection and to not use that contraception and or barrier protection is denying your partner's right to bodily autonomy and should be considered sexual assault so she was not trying to uh, distinguish between genders and the difference that she poses here between the female lying about birth control and the stealthing of a man is that condoms are a barrier protection as well as contraception so they protect against stis which they call i think they call that across the world what we call stds <clears throat> excuse me as well as pregnancy so now she poses she lets the reader decide for themselves whether you think that the risk of pregnancy is better equal to or worse than the combined risk of pregnancy in an sti uh either mild like herpes or severe like hiv so she says that that might stand to make a difference in the severity of the transgression. And I do agree with her position here. I agree with her position here. Whether or not I believe in her, and if you read this, I'm gonna leave the, the uh, link in the description box. Whether or not you follow up and read the whole, the articles and the, um, and the responses and things, and you find out that she's an intersectional feminist, she's a self-proclaimed intersectional feminist, and make some comments, uh, some nebulous, somewhat females superiority complex comments at the bottom. Regardless of the fact that I do not agree with her ideology, I do agree with the stance that she's taken here. And yes, it is a violation of your bodily autonomy if your conditions for having sex with that person are X, and then the partner, the person says that they're X and you believe that they're X and then they actually are Y. So I do agree with that. And I also do agree with the uh, the, the fact that stealthing would be worse because a person can be exposed to STDs and not just get pregnant. However, the main, the main thing I have about the degree to which this is an issue is because it's not really a man's, it's not really, a man does not have an incentive to want to get a woman pregnant if he doesn't want to have a family and take care of her. So 
When a man gets a woman pregnant, he knows in the back of his mind that it's gonna cost something. So why would men randomly have the intuition to go around, excuse me, why would men go around and have the incentive to put their financial futures at risk just because they wanna nut up at some chick? A man, I believe his name is Icelandic or Nordic. Um, I might not pronounce it right, it looks like Evind, Evind Georgstad. So I think Evind, I mean, from my senses, uh, might be something like Alvin, you know, um, what what Brit the Brits consider Alvin or Anglos consider Alvin. <clears throat> but regardless of his name, he makes an interesting response to Mikalidis. <clears throat> And he says, if you're comparing the relative risks for people with penises as compared to people with vaginas, then there's some relevance that contraception is not the last ditch defense against pregnancy for those people with vaginas, which is another angle. And that angle is that a woman can decide when and where she wants to have a baby, regardless of the inconvenience I know of getting an abortion or, or other things, uh, the cost. Uh, she can still decide if she wants to take a morning after pill or not, or if she wants to have an abortion or not. So, but a man doesn't have that ability. So that is also a risk that in favor of the, in favor of the parallel drawn between the two um, stealthing and uh, li lying or uh, what's the word, legal word for that? Misleading someone, uh, negligence, if you will, of birth control, misrepresentation of on birth control. This is another point for in favor of the males. Well, not in favor of the males, but rather uh, against the females strength of degree of damage or harm done to them. Now, he said there's also the fact that cheating on condom use over time without detection it's pretty hard, but I can't really. Oh, and then he says, but simply not taking the pill while claiming to be taking it is fairly easy to do with low to risk of detection. That's true. However, I would say about his point is that if a, the, the likelihood of someone not going raw after being in a relationship over time, they must really not trust each other. Like, my the thing the thing i disagree with evind is uh, evind about is that while it's true that condom use over time detection is pretty darn hard because you but by then they would know each other you, they would know each other's movements they would know each other's style and they'd more than likely be going raw listen guys if you're going with a girl and <laughs> in a period of over time use and you're not hitting it raw Either you don't trust her, or she doesn't trust you, or maybe she, you guys are fucking a bunch of other people. In that case, it would be something for the youngins. Because, no, once you get up at a certain age, it's just like, dude, putting a condom on is like putting a plastic bag over your head. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you might as well just, I mean, fucking get a Fifi bag, you know? But yeah, I totally agree with the point of, um, in all seriousness, regarding the. Um, the, the last the last ditch barrier against pregnancy falls in the females uh, in the females court McLeedis uh, comes back and responds to Evind and um, she's basically this saying that she left the reader to decide whether or not the risk was severe and um um, and she didn't want she said she didn't want to get bogged down about arguing whether pregnancy is a bigger deal than than a financial obligation concerning lines of defense versus bodily integrity versus whatever but she said to the man and, and you know what and, and her answer was very respectful she said yes your perspective is valid and it's fine i just don't want to get into it now I've noticed that uh, Mikalidis has other people on this thread that she responds to that she doesn't go into depth with anything. She makes her point and I do get what she's saying. But when you present a paragraph on Cura and you are voted the number one responder, people are going to respond to you. And if you are blogging, as she says she does, then 
why not uh, why not answer it or maybe do a video about it, include a, a link to where people can access it and then have an open dialogue on wherever you are. If you are uh, representing yourself as a person who is who is standing on two feet, like in horse stance, like a monk in ancient China, standing on your ground, then by all means, let the inquiries come in and answer them. But uh, then again, who am I to judge? Because sometimes I don't feel like getting into it either. So, but anyways, that's what uh, she says. And um, that's cool. There is a list of back and forth commenters. But overall, the consensus from the people on Kiora based on a parallel between a woman lying about birth control and stealthing overwhelmingly is in favor of a parallel between stealthing and lying about birth control. So we may have some hope yet. Now I've seen some other, other uh, Kiora message boards that haven't been as, as balanced as this one. Uh, but I'd like to just mention Hara Ariel's comment and Hara Ariel says that if they were having, if she or he was having sex with a person while under depression, they were on birth control only to find they lied about the birth control. That person would indeed take it as stealthing or the, or as the removal of condoms in a mid sex act. And I borrow from Ariel by saying sex, uh, sexual assault by deception or what uh or but what he says is he he coins it i believe the proper term is rape by deception that's certainly what he would consider it if that happened to him or her okay so i agree with that and that's why i use the word deceptive practice to different to include stealthing lying about birth control lying about being uh, age of majority, which I'm going to talk about maybe in the next part to this video and uh, other things that people need to know in order to live a safe and healthy life and and that being put in compromise by lies. So there you have it. And until next time, see you around.